I want to make sure and elaborate and give you some opinion and give you some context and try and, I don't want to preach too much, but at some point I'm trying to get people motivated to go out and actually, and get maybe you weren't involved before, but now you understand it's a very serious situation. When you look at the plume models and one melts down, you know the wind changes direction, and Fukushima it went in all directions. It really did. They say, well, it went northwest, it did, but just before it went southwest and right at Tokyo. I mean, 75 kilometers, the big heavy section of the plume, you can see it clearly in the document. So there's not much difference, I tell you, between Plumegate and probably Progress or any of these others. I don't want to slander any of these companies, but they seem to be very shady and mostly concerned about profit margin over our lives and our livelihood and our health. And we've got a study called the Tooth Fairy Study that goes in and samples children's teeth. And I think if Mangano is still taking baby teeth, if you want to send the baby teeth in, they'll... They want to know how close you live to a power plant, and they test the tooth for strontium. And as the study goes, the closer they get to a power plant, the higher the level of strontium. So these older reactors, they have what are called effluents. And the NRC will post this up on their website. You can read about it. And apparently the effluent is a discharge. It's a radioactive discharge. There's no way around it. That's what it is. All plants do it. If they have to relieve pressure, better relieve a little bit of pressure and have a little bit of radiation go out than have the plant melt down or have some major incident. So in these effluents in the turkey point test, they're showing that closer to the plant, the children had more strontium in their teeth. None of these plants are safe. Again, this only comes with careful study because you don't hear it on mainstream. You might get some of this on the alternative media. There's some... I don't deny, even Alex Jones had the guy from When Technology Fails, and he even kept his mouth shut long enough for, I can't, I should know the guy's name, he's really good, very, very well informed, and he was able to speak his mind about systematically shutting all these plants down and what it would take to do that. And I do not deny on that one episode he was allowed full reign during that section to describe what the, the massive effort it would take, to, the massive undertaking to do that. It is no easy feat. We have to decommission. We have to store spent fuel pool. With stuff has to cool down five to ten years before you can even put it in a dry cask. And then you've got to maintain those casks for how long? Folks, it's how long be dead, right? And they'll still be there. That's a fact. So... Let's get back to the documents. We've got 15 minutes left here. Okay, I'm on page 10. Okay, my notation, Palo Verde particulate grab. What I wanted to mention here was, and it's more than just one generating station here in the states that detected radiation from Fukushima. Diablo Canyon detected it. The Nine Mile Station in New York detected it. The uh, Jenna Power Plant Generating Station near New York detected it, and maybe others I haven't come across yet. Now, of course, the amounts they claim they detected are super low, but I put it to you in the brief. The guy says, here's what I give the people in the power plant, and then they say, okay, and give them from the rest of the information to us. And you can clearly see there's, again, channels and information is being very selectively given to certain people. So when they say the measurement's low, like I say with Unit 4, if I had to side with someone, I'd say I'd probably side with the fear mongers on Unit 4 because I know they're going to test low, and they always are. You're not going to – isn't that the sorriest thing about it, that we can get real-time factual information to keep ourselves safe? It's very coveted, and then we're giving us some cleanse and sanitized version, not very close to reality because if you believe Obama and what his NRC and experts told him, we've nothing to worry about, not even in Hawaii. For crying out loud, not even Hawaii safe, according to Obama and the NRC folks. Isn't that amazing? Looks like I'll never get to surf there, I suppose. Now, Palo Verde Generating Station provided values for samples drawn on Unit 2 Auxiliary Building Roof on 3 So not only is the military watching the radiation and calculating and studying and documenting and analyzing it, but the power stations are as well, and then you've got some of the RADnet monitors went down. Some were recalibrated to where when they came back up, they produced a level even lower than what the background was previously. So we knew, and I give Alexander Higgins credit for posting an article on this one, we knew that they'd been tampered with by the very fact the baseline had now dropped beneath what a Cold War bomb era radiation was, and so you certainly wouldn't have less radiation there after Fukushima, so we know something's not right there. So multiple stations were detecting uh, radiation and probably not giving an accurate reporting. Again, they know they're being recorded. They know about the FOIA documents. They're 
Dragnet is well in place. They're a well-honed machine. They've done this before. This is getting to be a, you know, pretty soon it's just going to be second nature. They're not even going to think about it, and we won't get any information at all. Okay, so it's top of page 11. Okay, exactly. Very good. Page 11 on this document. Let me back up just a little bit here. NARAC calculations. Again, NARAC's doing these plume modeling and modeling of atmospheric particles or ejections into the atmosphere. It doesn't have to be radioactive plume. It could be black carbon or from a coal plant or uh, SO4. They can model the acid rain and that kind of stuff. In fact, the NILU, which I think is Swedish or Norwegian or something, they originally, that's what they did, specialized in sulfuric acid and black carbon and modeling of other from power plants and what was in the air. But after Fukushima, they started modeling radioactive cesium and iodine, xenon as a gas, again, largely untested. They say they don't really know, according to my studies, what it does to people. You know, so therefore, it's safe, right? You know. So NIL used doing modeling early on, but then when that caught on, and I got to give Dutch Sense credit, he posted about that early on. And as soon as he posted and it started getting traction on YouTube, that site stopped uh, modeling the radiation from Fukushima. Very suspicious. Again, just like the Surgeon General, I suspect, got a phone call and said, you go out and not only retract it, but get on camera and retract it for the public because we're not going to have anyone knowing about what's going on here. This is damn serious. If they knew about these power plants and the truth about them, they're ticking time bombs, ticking time bombs. If you don't know what they're going to do in the next couple of days, we're going to cover all this. We're going to look at plume modeling. We'll look at actual real effects in Fukushima. People are being threatened. It's hard to get information out over there as well. People are being threatened over here, I'm told, about these FOIA documents. There's a large amount of intimidation and threats going on. But you know what, folks? Certain things are worth dying for. And if we do not address this severe issue, we are going to have a serious situation for our children and their children. This will, you know, I'm 44. I'll probably die and be gone before the worst of it hits, maybe, if I'm lucky. But I have a couple more meltdowns in this planet. You're not going to want to be here, I can tell you that. Now, it says, NARAC calculations completed performing a dose assessment for Tokyo using the supercore, quote, unquote, supercore source term. Plume estimates are considered extreme worst case scenarios. And there's a spot in here where the ambassador says he wants a more pessimistic scenario. Right? People are complaining and saying, hey, what are you modeling off a of half a source term or something? Give me the pessimistic scenario. Give me the worst case scenario, man. And they should have done that at the beginning. Said, What's the worst case scenario? Prepare for that. Prepare the American public for that. Okay, folks, my earpiece feels like it may be losing power. I hope I'm not losing transmission here, but I'll continue. With nine minutes left here. I made it two hours. Commercial free. Don't get paid. Total truth. The full truth as fast as I, I know I elaborate. But it's important you get the full picture of what happened to me with the alternative media, with the FOIA documents, with the big conspiracy, the whole big picture, right? You need to know that. It's critical. Otherwise, you're living in the dark, folks. Plume estimates are considered extreme worst-case scenarios. Results to be discussed at 321 White House meeting, okay? We've got numerous instances where we know the White House took a lead early on. They were waiting in this document. If you read through this one between now and the next time I come on, you can see they're waiting a number of times for decisions to be made by the White House. No, it doesn't say Barack Obama told us to do this, okay? But Hillary Clinton's name is mentioned in here, and I'm following up on that, folks. If I can find out what that document was they handed to her, maybe there's something in there she didn't tell us about, right? And then I can put two and two together. Of course, Hillary probably had me, she probably had me, you know, rubbed out for sure. So I'll leave that. You guys can dig in and help, and maybe you'll find Hillary Clinton. And maybe you'll write that article, you know? Maybe I don't want to write it after all. It's damn dangerous the Clintons and the Bush family are some old crime syndicate families that you do not cross them. Stu Webb's lawsuit has to do with the Bush crime family. I mean, they will send hit people after you to, to whack you. That's a fact. It's like a movie. It really is. But there's so much money in this monopoly, the energy monopoly, folks. In the last couple of minutes, let me sum up here. And please do go through these documents. I post up four, five, six of them in the NTTF recommendations where you really get a great idea what it would take to make our plants moderately safe. And that's my opinion on that. But I think if they did all those steps and took all those procedures, you still can't guarantee. There's still no guarantee. And it only takes one massive meltdown to just ruin this entire area and, and damage so many people. It's phenomenal. It is like another weapon of war about this strange, you know, backdoor, not even 
maybe not even on purpose. Maybe they just sporadically built them, not really giving it a whole lot of thought into the future. Now they're in this terrible spot, like I say, this highway pileup, and there's no easy way out. Well, you release the press technology. Okay, you begin to tell us the truth, number one. Seriously, folks, transparency tells the truth. Release the hidden technology, 5,000-plus patents being suppressed. You want jobs? Well, then we start decommissioning nuclear plants and building, you know, some kind of, if not solar farms, I'm not too big on that idea, but I like the idea of each house has solar panels that are 80% efficient. We, we do away with the 20% more than that, and they see the punt. That's bogus, totally bogus. Give people 100% efficient, 80%. 70% would be better, and turn the home into a power generating station. Yes, the corporations lose power. I know. Ooh, that's so, so terrible. Power goes back to people. Money goes back to people. That money can be used to stay healthy, to get an education, to, to fix your car, to do anything. We're paying so much in power. Now, I tell you, my opinion is this. I don't have a formula to prove it, but I think we're paying about, we should be paying about five cents on the dollar for energy. Because some of these devices I've looked into, it's a matter of the bearings wearing out or magnets needing to be replaced, it greatly decreases the cost. It's not free or doesn't come out of a magical dimension and elves deliver you a package of electricity. But it's much a greater reduced cost. It's much more efficient, much more cost effective once they're mass produced. You know, the guy in Australia can't mass produce it because no bank wants to touch it. They know not to touch it. They know they are not allowed to finance someone who's going to produce a super cheap form of energy. My own fathers had proposals denied by the Obama and Bush administration, both Democrats and Republicans. He's basically got what I call a super battery, right? Aren't you tired of using all those double A's and everything? Uh, Toyota was trying to contact him about it, right? America wasn't interested in it. Friggin' Toyota's contacting my dad about it. That's a real experience, first or second hand. I know my father fairly well and I've heard his stories about it. And then, so there's real suppression. You release that. You create jobs decommissioning the plants, and we begin to clean up not just this country, but, you know, France and, and Germany. I think Germany is already shutting them down or whatever. So something to look into. Some countries are already taking steps to do something about it. What are we doing over here? We can't even get alternative media to step up to the plate, folks. Hold them accountable. Okay, hold them accountable. Again, remember, and I'm out of here in just a second, have a special Halloween night. Do you hear that sound right there? You listen, listen close, folks. You hear that? Why, that's the sound of my Greyhound bus cranking up out back. Yes, it sure is. And Halloween night, I'm taking out for a ride, folks. And any troll that's out in the street, I'm going to run them over. I might back up over them one time even and take off again. Okay, so Halloween night, folks, it's all about trolls. I don't know what time I'm going to go on, but I'm, I'm laying it on the line that night, man. I'm laying on They better send that black ops assassin between now and then, folks, because that night, all the dirt, all the evidence, anything I got. Maybe a little speculation, too. Maybe a lot of speculation. <laughs> Who knows? So join me for that. And I may be back tomorrow night. Let me get some information together tomorrow, and I'll post up if I'm going to do another blog talk tomorrow night. I've got just a couple minutes left, and I really appreciate everyone for joining me and taking interest in a subject of paramount importance. I cannot stress enough. Once you understand these documents, it explains everything. Why they ain't talking about it all the blackout, media blackout, explains everything. The puzzle is just comes totally in the picture, and you really begin to understand the big picture and really how in, in, in deep trouble we really are because, again, the, the overall problem is fascism. It's really that simple. And fascism has a lot of symptoms of which the fact that when there's an industrial accident, people are not going to be, the public at large will not be given the truth. All right? And, we're, and we've already suffered deaths from this. Make no mistake. There's a bird study done in Chernobyl, and there's a bird study done around uh, Fukushima that both are congruent. Methodology the same, same effect with the birds both times. So we have a double check to the Mangano Sherman study. They might not know it yet, but I'll post that up, and you need to uh, watch that 30-minute video on the bird study that proves conclusively that that is the mortality rate going up from nothing else but the footprint of the radiation from Fukushima. So, folks, that's it for tonight. I'm going to finish it up here and go get my vegetable soup and my beer bread that my wife is still kind to make and thank her for taking care of me so this crippled old man can do this research and get the truth out. Join us on the Plume Gate Uncovered, Uncovering Plume Gate WordPress blog. Follow the links, dig into the documents, open a WordPress blog and start writing about it, man. I don't want it the glory. I don't want any glory. I want to go back and do music. Confirmed Reptilians coming out pretty soon. I'll let you guys know when that's up. So this is Tony Muga, a.k.a. Patrick Penry. 
that's the broadcast for tonight, and uh, I'll post up tomorrow and let you know if I come on again tomorrow.